Hi guys, happy dinner time to you. In this video, I've got five new recipes for you. These are quick, easy, and budget-friendly recipes. My family loves all of these that I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video. My toddler, who is two years old, also eats all of these. So if you have a picky eater, maybe give some of these a try. The first recipe that we're starting with is a creamy pesto pasta. So you're going to need some sausage, some rotini, some pesto, garlic, ricotta cheese. I've got a few seasonings there, some lemon and zucchini. And you can obviously omit the zucchini if you'd like, but I personally really like it in there. I've also made this with mushrooms in it and it's very good as well. But we're gonna use some oregano, some lemon pepper and some garlic salt. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is get my zucchini chopped into some bite-sized pieces. I like doing these in smaller pieces but big enough to be able to pick them out because my daughter is not a fan of zucchini, which is fine. She's two years old, so she doesn't have a very refined palate. I'm also going to zest the lemons. I think the lemon zest adds just a bunch of flavor to this dish. You don't have to do this step. If you don't do it, I don't think it's a make or break. I would just add a little extra lemon pepper if you're not going to zest the lemon, but I really like the freshness that this brings to the dish. You can also just do one lemon if you like. I really enjoy the freshness that the lemon gives, so I prefer to do two. So you can use any kind of pasta that you like. Personally, I like the rotini pasta. My daughter thinks it's fun because they're little corkscrews, but I've also done this with bow ties. You could use fettuccine, linguine, whatever kind of pasta your heart desires. It's your kitchen, cook with your heart. You're just gonna cook the pasta as per package directions. And then I'm going to juice the lemons as well. really love preparing this dish because I said it's a very quick dinner. I think start to finish it's about 20-25 minutes, which if you're a busy mom like me with two under two, well my daughter just turned two, but I also have an infant, it is very nice to be able to get dinner on the table quickly. Once your noodles are done, we're just going to drain them and set them to the side until the very end when we mix everything together. You don't have to worry about rinsing these or anything like that. The starch water that's left on the noodles will help thicken the sauce just a little bit. So in the same pan, once my noodles are done, I'm just gonna throw my sausage in and get that browning. I really enjoy that this is a one pot dinner because the less dishes, the better. I also only used half a roll of sausage in this. You can use Italian sausage if you like, it's really good. I went more on the budget friendly side for this recipe, so I just did the regular pork sausage and I used half of it because I just did. If you want to stretch your dinner, you can use half the sausage and then save the other half for a second dinner. Feel free to use the whole roll of sausage, it doesn't matter to me. Once my sausage is good and brown, I'm gonna throw my zucchini in since we have some of the sausage grease in the bottom of the pan. I'm not going to add any oil, and I'm also gonna throw the lemon zest in there as well. So you're just gonna cook the zucchini until it's nice and fork tender. 
stir it all up. The sausage grease adds so much flavor and there's not a ton of grease in the bottom. If you notice that there is a lot of grease, if you use a whole roll of sausage, go ahead and drain a little bit of it off. You wanna leave about a tablespoon of the grease or you can drain it all off and use avocado oil or vegetable oil or anything like that if you don't want to use the sausage grease. I've been cooking this about seven minutes on medium heat until the zucchini is nice and tender. And I'm just gonna throw in some garlic, half of that container of ricotta cheese, and half of the little jar of pesto. So if you do only use the half roll of sausage, you will have enough ingredients to make a second dinner out of this, which is the route that I went. So that's something to keep in mind. You would just have to get an extra box of pasta. So once everything's thrown in there, strain your lemon juice. You obviously don't want lemon seeds in your sauce. Mix everything together and just kind of let it come together for a couple minutes on medium heat until it starts bubbling. Once it's nice and warmed through, you're just gonna add your pasta in and mix it all up. You can tell the pasta is kind of sticking together because I didn't rinse it. That's fine. Just take your spoon and gently break everything up. It will mix together. And just like that, you've got a quick and easy, healthy dinner for your family. This is a big crowd pleaser in my house. Moving on to our second dinner, we've got minimal ingredients, which I love. This is going to be an egg roll bowl. So you need two bags of coleslaw mix, some soy sauce and onion. I threw a little garlic salt in there just for funsies. And then you can use ground sausage again. I actually bought a pork loin and I just ground up a hunk of the pork loin and made my own ground pork. So whatever route you wanna go for the meat, you can also do this with chicken, ground turkey, whatever your heart desires. But pork loin was on sale when I went to the grocery store, so I just ground it up in my food processor and made my own ground pork, which is super easy to do. That's a nice tip if you are trying to stay on a budget, get a pork loin and you can divide it up into many dinners. And I have found that you can use pork loin in substitution of chicken in a lot of dishes. So I'm just going to dice up my onion. The onion's gonna cook down so you don't have to do super small pieces. I just do a rough chop on all of my onions because it doesn't really matter in the long run. And you're gonna go ahead and throw the onion in with the meat. I've got this on medium high heat because I do wanna brown the meat pretty well. And the onions will obviously cook with the meat. And I'm gonna throw in some garlic salt. You can do regular salt, you can leave this out. It's not gonna make or break the dish. I also prefer the low sodium or reduced sodium soy sauce. You could use cocoa aminos if that's your thing, but I'm gonna throw in a little bit of soy sauce just to flavor that pork up a little bit. That was probably about two tablespoons worth. I just finished off that bottle that I had in the fridge. So just let that cook out into your meat and let that get browned real good. Once my meat is brown and the onions are cooked, I'm just gonna throw in both bags of the coleslaw mix. You can do one bag if you want, but it does kind of cook down quite a bit. So I prefer the two bags. You're gonna throw those in and we're gonna throw a little bit more garlic salt. Like I said, I get the reduced sodium soy sauce, so I'm not worried about the salt content. 
If you do use regular soy sauce, I would maybe omit the garlic salt and just do garlic. That way it doesn't end up too salty. But I'm gonna throw some more soy sauce in here so that there is some liquid to kind of steam the cabbage. And there's the garlic salt because the garlic salt will pull the moisture out of the cabbage as well and kind of help it reduce down. So you're gonna cover it. This lid obviously doesn't fit my pot, but it doesn't matter another one pot dinner for you if you're keeping track. And I'm gonna cook this on medium high heat for about five to seven minutes, stirring it halfway through. You just want your cabbage to be reduced down. I prefer my cabbage to still have a little bit of texture and crunch to it, so about 10 minutes, I think, is about how much I cook this, but it's all up to preference. You can serve this over rice, you can fill it in, you can make tacos out of this, put it in a tortilla, we've done that before, it's very delicious. So whatever you would like to do this night, we just straight up went for the egg roll bowls, which there's nothing wrong with that. You can also add red pepper flakes if you want a little bit of kick with this, but we just went plain jank, my daughter did actually eat some of this, which is awesome because any kind of vegetable that I can get in my kids is a win. So again, start to finish, this was probably a 20 minute dinner, one pot, minimal ingredients. How many ingredients do we have? Four, five? This is so delicious. We serve this over rice a lot of times. If we have other people joining us for dinner, we can stretch the dinner with some rice, which is a really big help. Moving on to another dinner, we've got some pork tacos. So there's that pork loin I was talking about, so I'm just gonna use a chunk of the pork loin. You can use taco seasoning. I actually didn't have any, so I'm making my own, but use taco seasoning. You're gonna need a crock pot or a slow cooker, instant pot, whatever you wanna use, and cheddar cheese, salsa verde or salsa of your liking, and sour cream. We prefer to use Greek yogurt in substitute of sour cream because of the extra protein that it adds, and then some tortillas. So I'm just gonna throw a hunk of, a hunk, a hunk of meat in the crock pot, you can use chicken, you can use beef, whatever you'd like. Throw in your taco seasoning. If you like to make it from scratch, you do you, but you can also use a packet. Again, I like the lower sodium packets. Uh, I shop at Aldi and they actually didn't have any. They were out of stock, so we're just winging it and making our own taco seasoning here. Not a big deal at all, but a shortcut is to use a taco seasoning packet. I'm just gonna throw some water in the crock pot, cover this and cook it on high for about four hours or low for eight hours, your choice. This was one of those mornings where I happened to throw it in kind of later, I think it was around noon when I threw this in. So you're just gonna kind of gauge it. If you throw it in in the morning, do it on low, do it on high, whatever you would prefer. A few hours later, I'm just gonna pull the pork out and shred it up. And it's super tender, super moist. This stuff is delicious. I love using this. You can use chicken, any kind of meat that you want, really. It doesn't have to be pork, but I really like pork loins because they're cheap and we are going budget friendly these days. I also like to throw a little bit of the juice from the crock pot over the pork so that it doesn't dry out as it cools and this really packs a punch of flavor in the juice because it has cooked in the meat, so everything's kind of infused. And then we're just gonna assemble some tacos. So I've got some tortillas. I'm gonna throw a little bit of the pork on there, top it with some cheese, some of the sour cream or Greek yogurt, whatever you prefer to use, and then some salsa of your liking. I really like the green salsa verde with this. I think it complements the pork really, really well. Like to not overcomplicate dinners. This is one, two, three, four, five, six ingredients. If you are keeping track, six ingredients, and you've got a really delicious meal that'll feed your family. A 
another thing I love about this dish is it's one of those set it and forget it and then you just assemble when it's dinner time so you're not spending a ton of time in the kitchen. You have time to get other things done as a busy mom. It's so taxing to have to spend a ton of time in the kitchen and not be able to put your attention elsewhere when you have small children. These are delicious. If you've never had pork tacos, I really encourage you to try them. Another night, another dinner. We are doing super, super simple fried rice. So I prefer brown rice. I've got my low sodium soy sauce and onions, some more of that pork loin, and then just a bag of frozen veggies. You can use whatever vegetables that you like. I've done this with broccoli. I've done this with the California medley. I've done this with an Asian mix, whatever your heart desires. So we're just gonna start off by chopping up our onion. off a hunk of pork. <laughs> pork loins are great guys. If you haven't ventured into pork loins, I highly suggest it. I think I paid maybe $8 for this whole pork loin and we're getting multiple dinners out of it. So I'm just going to cut this up into small little cubes, little bite-sized pieces so it cooks pretty quickly. Again, another about 20 minute dinner. These are awesome. Minimal ingredients, quick dinners, you really can't beat it. And budget friendly is icing on the cake. So I threw my, according to my rice package, the amount of water that I was going to need with some soy sauce, and then I just threw my pork and my onion in the water. So as it comes up to temperature, it's gonna start to cook that pork, and then once you bring it to a boil, you're gonna add your rice. I think I did two cups. Looks like two cups of rice. So I did about two and a half cups of water. I did just a little extra water because we're cooking the pork and the onions in there. So I wanted there to be enough liquid to cook everything together. So once you get your water up to temperature, you're gonna throw your rice in and cook it according to package directions. I believe with this instant rice, it says five minutes, but it's brown rice. So I tend to cook this longer. So you're just gonna cover it and cook it. Once your timer goes off and most of the liquid is absorbed, it doesn't have to be completely absorbed. You can see that there's a little bit of liquid still down in there. I'm gonna add my veggies. I did steam these in the microwave beforehand according to the back of the package. I think it was about five minutes. So you're just gonna dump that in there. Add the rest of the onion. I only used half of an onion when cooking the pork and then I like a little bit more of a crunch in my fried rice. You don't have to add extra onion. You can throw it all in at the beginning. And I'm gonna throw in about a tablespoon of some oil. And then just give that a really good mix so that everything is coated with just a little bit of oil so that it will sear very nicely. And then of course, seasoning every layer, we're gonna add a little bit more soy sauce because we threw the veggies in there. So we want to season the veggies pretty well. About a tablespoon. And then you're gonna crank that heat, baby. Turn that sucker all the way up and don't touch it. Let it go for about three, four minutes. You're gonna hear it sizzling, that's totally fine. And then you're gonna stir it. That sizzle is what's going to fry your rice. 
so don't be scared. Don't stir it too early. So you're gonna give it a good mix. Let it sit for another two to three minutes because your pan is quite hot at this point, so you don't need to let it sit quite as long the second time. And then stir it up. You can do it one more time if you'd like. I only do it twice because time. <laughs> And then you have super, super easy fried rice. This is delicious. My daughter loves this stuff, which is amazing because it's full of veggies, full of meat and protein. It's awesome. Moving on, we're gonna use the rest of that pork loin or another hunk of it. We've got some cream of mushroom soup, brown gravy mix, an onion, some egg noodles, and a trusty old crock pot. Oh, we're making stroganoff. <laughs> Stroganoff or mushroom pork noodles. It's not a true stroganoff, but it's close enough. So again, just gonna chop up an onion. You see me do it a million times. I really love the onions in this because it really flavors that pork. And it's kind of a shortcut to having to add all kinds of ingredients because we're using the brown gravy packet and that's gonna add so much flavor to this dish. I also think that the brown gravy packet adds that beef taste to it, so you don't really have to be concerned about using pork in lieu of the beef, because beef is quite expensive these days, and it's just not in everybody's budget, and that's fine. You can use pork, it tastes so good in this dish because you have the brown gravy packet and it really kind of shifts the flavor to that beef profile that you're looking for in a stroganoff. Another one of those set it and forget it meals. You have to appreciate it. Being able to throw everything together and just turning the crock pot on and leaving it alone, it makes dinner time so, so easy. So I'm gonna throw in my pork, throw in my onions. I'm gonna add my cream of mushroom soup. I'm using two of them. And then you're gonna throw in some water, about a cup and a half of water, and your brown gravy packet. You can add some Worcestershire sauce, you can add a second gravy packet, you can add mushrooms, other vegetables, you could probably throw some broccoli in this would be really good. Whatever your heart desires, whatever your family likes. It's your kitchen, it's your rules. Once you get everything thrown in there, give it a real good mix. Just zhuzh it all around so everything's well incorporated. You can do low and slow for about seven to eight hours, or you can do high for about four. The longer you cook this, the better it will be, so don't be worried. And you can always add a little more water to it if you notice that your liquid is decreasing pretty quickly, but I've never really noticed that, but every crock pot is different, so whatever your heart desires. And then once you get close to dinner time, I've got my helper with me, as you can see. We're just gonna cook our egg noodles according to the package directions. Also, for those of you who are screaming at the TV right now, I am not as close to the stove as it looks in this shot. My daughter is not going to burn herself. She's not anywhere near that stove. Obviously, if she stretched her enormously long leg out, she probably could, but mama is on it and mama is keeping a good hand on that leg. So no concerns about my daughter getting burned. <laughs> Love a good steam shot. Once your noodles are done, you're gonna go ahead and shred your meat 
and then just add your noodles to your crock pot and give it a good mix. Look how tender that pork is. Oh, I'm salivating just looking at this. This is so good. It's a good comfort meal. And this day was actually really rainy and cold, so it was like the perfect pick-me-up, and it just warmed our souls. You can also leave your noodles on the side and serve like your noodles with the stroganoff mixture on top if that's what you prefer. We just mix it all together. I don't notice a problem with leftovers, but depending on your family's likes, you can also serve these kind of separate on your plate. This is really good over mashed potatoes too if you have some mashed potatoes and want to stretch the dinner. And there's your stroganoff. I really hope you guys enjoyed these recipes. These are super fun easy, super minimal ingredient recipes that our family really loves. Don't complicate dinner time. I really hope you guys try these out. If you do, comment below and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.